In today's video, I'll answer your question, what does it mean to be a living sacrifice in Romans chapter 12, verse 1? Then afterward, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. Paul's admonition to the believers in Rome was to sacrifice themselves to God. Not as a sacrifice on the altar, as the Mosaic law required the sacrifice of animals, but as a living sacrifice. The dictionary defines sacrifice as anything consecrated and offered to God. As believers, how do we consecrate and offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifice? Under the Old Covenant, God accepted the sacrifice of animals, but these were just a foreshadowing of the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Because of His ultimate once-for-all-time sacrifice on the cross, the Old Testament sacrifices became obsolete and are no longer of any effect. For those who are in Christ by virtue of saving faith, the only acceptable worship is to offer ourselves completely to the Lord. Under God's control, the believer's yet unredeemed body can and must be yielded to Him as an instrument of righteousness. In view of the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus for us, this is only reasonable. What does a living sacrifice look like in the practical sense? The following verse, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, helps us to understand. We are a living sacrifice for God by not being conformed to this world. The world is defined for us in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16 as the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All that the world has to offer can be reduced to these three things. The lust of the flesh includes everything that appeals to our appetites and involves excessive desires for food, drink, sex, and anything else that satisfies physical needs. Lust of the eyes mostly involves materialism coveting whatever we see that we don't have, and envying those who have what we want. The pride of life is defined by any ambition for that which puffs us up and puts us on the throne of our own lives. How can believers not be conformed to the world? By being transformed by the renewing of our minds. We do this primarily through the power of God's Word to transform us. We need to hear, read, study, memorize, and meditate on Scripture. The Word of God ministered in our hearts by the Holy Spirit is the only power on earth that can transform us from worldliness to true spirituality. In fact, it is all we need to be made complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The result is that we will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It is the will of God for every believer to be a living sacrifice for Jesus Christ. Want to learn more? Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Visit cockquestions.org for more great content and check out the details section below this video. There you'll find one book I recommend along with several links to related questions. If you'd like to learn about Bible Munch or if you're interested in bite-sized devotionals, subscribe to Bible Munch on YouTube. It's linked right here. Now remember, got questions? The Bible has answers. We'll help you find them.